Oh! Oh no! James! James behind you! James! James! Oh god! Run, James, run! Run for your life, get some help! Hey guys, my name is Dan, and today's reaction comes from Dead Meat. This is Too Many Cooks 2014 kill count. Now, this is one of the funnier things that I had the opportunity to watch in preparation for a pitch meeting or a kill count. And I can't even imagine the jokes that James and everyone else has in store for us here. Because with how funny this was, you know they're going to step up their game in this one. And I can't wait to learn more about it. And I'll give some further thoughts, if need be, at the very end of this video. But before we get into it, though, please do check all those links I have for you down in the description below. More specifically, the Dead Meat link. If you haven't already, it's a great way to support the entire Dead Meat team. And a great and easy way to support me. So go right below this video. Click all those buttons down there. Because I want to let you see future reactions that I do. But I'll also want the channel to grow without any further ado. Let's go. Welcome to the Kill Count. Where oh, the victims love that. Favorite horror media. I'm James A. Denise, and today we're looking at Too Many Cooks, an incredible short released Too on Adult cooks. Swim in 2014. If you somehow have never seen Too Many Cooks, please pause this video and go watch it right I already now. did. This send-up of sitcom openings takes a joke and runs an absolute marathon with mm -hmm. it. Every time you think it can't escalate, it does. If you don't know anything about it, I envy your first-time experience. Seriously, go watch it It was so good. And come back when you're done. Okay, we good? Great. Yep. Too Many Cooks first aired on October 28th, 2014 at 4 in the morning. It was part of an infomercial block where it played unannounced for all the insomniacs and stoners with the TV on. These people had absolutely no clue what the fuck it was when it started playing. Oh, I bet. They watched in confusion as a spoof of sitcom openings devolved into dread and became an absolute horror show. I wasn't mm -hmm. up that night, but I did have the pleasure of watching Too Many Cooks the next day. I had no idea what it was or even its runtime, and to watch it unfold like a meta comedy origami was an honor that I'll never forget. I grew up watching TGIF and Nick at Night, so Same. I was primed for parodies of shows like Full House, Family Matters, yep. Roseanne, and The yep. Brady Bunch. Too yep. Many Cooks was created by Casper Kelly, who had previously made the Adult Swim series Stroker and Hoop and Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. He also oh, created the okay. infamous Blair Witch parody, The Scooby-Doo Project. I know lots of you love that. The short mm -hmm. was given the green light by network executive Mike Lasso, who I'll forever respect for keeping Venture Bros on the air. As soon as he retired from Adult Swim in 2019, it was canceled. An oh. unforgivable act! Kelly and his mm. crew cast more than 70 local Atlanta actors, many of whom were inexperienced, all of whom were cast based on appearance. Working with a tiny budget and mostly borrowed equipment, the short was shot in just three days but took over a year to edit. Part of that time was spent perfecting the earworm of a theme song, which endlessly loops until the viewer is driven insane. Well, maybe too many cooks will spoil the broth, but the fill our hearts with Time and effort paid off, since Too Many Cooks became an instant cult classic. It was even well known enough for frickin' CNN to make a parody during the Republican primaries. I could heap praise onto this oh, thing all day I don't long, know that. but I'd rather see if there's a heap of bodies to count. Let's get to the kills. Hell yeah, man, let's do this. The short begins with a retro title car. Ooh. The font is pretty much exactly the same as the one for Full House, sure. which ran on ABC from 1987 to 1995. But the shot of the house and the font used for the credits is more directly inspired by Family Matters, the ABC okay. and CBS sitcom that ran from 89 to 97. A bouncing bassy theme song tells you all about the difficulties of stew creation and the ideal quantity of cooks. One thing's for sure, there are too many in this house, since every character shown is part of the cook family, even the one who's a bit more more cable TV than network family sitcom. Mm -hmm. These cooks have cooked up a bunch of scenes even cheesier than the theme song. Too many cooks, too many cooks, too many cooks. Fun fact, fed up older sister Caitlin Nacon would go on to play Enid in five seasons of The Walking Dead. She oh! uses her real name here, just like everyone else. Oh, yeah! The song ends with a silly family photo I remember her now. in a living room that looks like the one from Married with Children, it Fox's longest-running live-action sitcom, which aired for more than 10 years. Sure Even the did. couch looks super similar. But if you thought this song was over after just one nope. loop, well, God, you're, you're just so fucking stupid. Because that <laughs> year, it starts right back up again. Too many cooks. A family is this second round includes little bullies and totally cool kids, as well yeah. as friendly twin boys and, of course, Smarf, a puppet cat who's a reference to the late 80s sitcom Al. I got Lots that. Lots of people here, but don't worry. We can feed this whole damn family, since there are four professional cooks as well. One of them even has an assistant. Dude's kind of weird looking, though. After yeah, we'll see more of him later. Pee -pee, 
we move into the office setting, turning this into a workplace sitcom. But it still comes back home in the end, where games are sexy and so is love. Sexy like the swinging kind. Oh a smart my. hand rainbow leads into another family portrait. Oh, and they included that weirdo too. That's yep. Nice. I've got a note here how much I appreciate the specific references they make. Caitlin Nacon's intro is just like Kelly Williams from season mm -hmm. one of Family Matters, which also includes a family game night, though it's considerably less sexy. And Will Dove's yep. ladder lookie is reminiscent of the character Sam from Clarissa Explains It All. Yeah! Hell yeah, I remember that show. Dinner table in true Roseanne fashion, the ABC sitcom that ran from 1988 to 1997. But this table is somehow situated to seat way more than just the Connors. Mm -hmm. Even if you included both Beckys, this shit just keeps going round and round. Sure I love does. how a saxophone joins in on the music in reference to the sax led theme for Roseanne. Wonder if this buff fireman can do the Roseanne laugh. <laughs> yeah, maybe. The Too Many Cooks theme song, which has been stuck in my head for fucking weeks was Same. a cool record. The lyrics were written by creator Casper Kelly and so the main by musician Michael Kohler, an Adult Swim veteran whose work includes Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Harvey Birdman. When it came time for the Jingle the Shift genres though, musician Sean Coleman took over, arranging all the parts, playing all the instruments, and singing the male vocals you hear. A video wipe and some hand percussion takes us to Cop Drama Land. It takes a lot to make a stew. I couldn't face these streets And there's a guy again. You. Lots of great jokes and references here, like the lady throwing her baton exactly like it happens in the opening to TJ Hooker. You may Ooh. start to notice that weird guy becoming more sinister, mm -hmm. although it's easy to miss when you're looking at coats and a pie played by Lars von Trier, the Danish filmmaker who's made fucked up movies like Antichrist. Oh Casper dear. Kelly was originally going to say the pie was played by David Lynch, but he felt that was too obvious, so he went with another, quote, freak ass director. The pie transitions us to an animated G.I. Joe segment. <laughs> And by now, that weirdo's an outright antagonist. Oh, sure is. On. Falcon interlude. Yeah, Falcon, baby! I just love this. You think I this is really gonna stop? The imagery here wasn't initially <laughs> intentional. It happened because of an editing error, and they thought it was funny, so they kept it in. The Falcon imagery takes us into a soap opera style opening that feels a little Dallas to me, but is more directly inspired by Falcon Crest, which oh. ran on CBS from 1981 to 1990. This is where the horror begins, since Candace Mabry is implied to be cleaved by a machete. Oh in no, a Candace! Fight. Then Peck introduces himself and also joins our count when the killer presumably kills him after his frame freezes. Tennis officiant. Dan Triandiflo is more certainly killed thanks to a knife in his back. Yikes. We visit a college to get into slumber party massacre mode, where Alina Nord is the killer's first co-ed victim. In the kitchen, we can assume Amy Rollins is killed via drowning in the sink. Be mm -hmm. grateful it ain't liquid nitrogen, aim. Yep. Katie Adkins is the next student introduced, and she freeze frames like it's naked gun as the killer pops up. And then the killer pops up! It's so good! Who joined us for a podcast episode about Too Many Cooks. Nice. And like many other wonderful people, attended our wedding last year. Unlike the other victims, Katie appears to become aware. Katie, can you hear me? If you can, run! Run away, Katie! Oh shit, it worked! Katie fucking books it backstage, running <laughs> past decommissioned robots, <laughs> and through various Walter. sets built in this Fulton Industrial Warehouse. Oh, All the while, so she's pursued relentlessly by the killer, the now haunting theme song seemingly attached to him. The killer is played by a perfectly casted William Tokarski, who had already worked with Kelly in Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. He didn't start acting until he was 60 and wound up wow. with bit parts in movies like Anchorman 2. He's gone on to appear in Jumanji 2 and the horror film Tragedy Girl. That's I'm awesome, dude! He keeps getting work. He's so damn good and creepy here. Mm -hmm. The killer can be seen early on in the short, well before I started pointing him out. His first appearance is behind the smarty little sister 20 seconds I later. missed that one! He came from Kelly and Aww. editor Paul Painter, who gets a credit in the animation sequence alongside the theme song's arranger Sean Coleman. Kelly's backstory for the killer is that he's a guy who tried to be a sitcom dad but never quite fit in with the rest of the Cook family which caused him to eventually snap and enact violent vengeance. Mm -hmm. The sweater he wears is meant to be reminiscent of Bill Cosby's another monster. Desperate Katie hides in a closet but thanks to the glow of her name tag the killer that damn lines. name the tag final girl is finally killed with a slash and a blood splatter. R.I.P. Out of place hottie Kate Geralt reappears to do a Wonder Woman spin as the music shift to match that show's opening theme. Her rotations take forever to get going. She really should have primed them beforehand. Yeah, you and it's all in so. vain. She's killed when a machete goes straight into her Bang! face. Creeper peeper Will Dove tries to come to the rescue, but he's beheaded mid-transformation, giving nope. us a double decap. Bye -bye. I'm only adding one body to the count. The short then shifts into law and order mode, and once again matches the music style. 
Yeah, very much Law and but Order. Detective Derek Huffmaster joins the count quickly, and this poor guy doesn't even get his pain negated by a freeze frame. We're in hell mode now, complete with a head in a bleeding sink, yep. apparently belonging to a Sioux car. Then someone else named Amy Holmberg is seen dead and being dragged away out of the sitcom's living room. This allows the killer to live out his own sitcom. He dances to music on headphones, just like Caitlin Nacon did, mm -hmm. plays both Will Dove's Binocu Peeper yep. and Victoria's Son's Coy Topless Flirt, yep. and presents his own special recipe, just like Tara Ox did two names into this thing. Ugh. All the while, his name is obscured by artifacts as the audio oh, distorts, so suggesting he may be some sort of glitch in this whole thing's reality. Mm -hmm. And while a severed foot has never counted as a kill, I can count the three heads we see on the table as he has a Hannibal-style supper. God damn, that is one creepy motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, he gets blown up by laser beams. Wait, what? Who did that? Haha, <laughs> smart. Yeah, there he is. Oh. This is the story of Cook's Cybernetic Operational Optimize Knights of Science. You may have thought we were done, but now nope. we've just shifted into science fiction with a new opening and narration referencing the original Battlestar Galactica from the late 70s. In this rendition of the show, the heroic cooks battle against the evil broths, which consist of William Tokarski armies as well as William Tokarski spaceships. But the cooks have lizard people on their side, which may be a reference to the Gorn from Star Trek. The VFX in this section were done by Awesome Inc., an Atlanta-based animation studio that's worked on lots of Adult Swim series. They also created the G.I. Joe segment and Smarf's Hand Rainbows, as well as pretty much all of the short's effects. We transition into a hospital where Cook family patriarch Ken DeLozier, the very first person introduced in the short, mm -hmm. is laid up. That's a fine how do you do laugh track. The doctor calls it a bad case of intronitis, like sitcom intro-itis. And uh, unfortunately, yes. this strain is contagious. Oh no! Oh no! The name! Judging no! Judging Doc's reaction, it's also painful and terminal. Kill me! Unfortunately for him, he's not added to the count before we leave the scene. He shouldn't feel too left out though, since actor John Curran has already been on the kill count. He played a pilot who got infected in Quarantine 2 Terminal. In fact, a bunch of these actors had or would have horror credits, with some of their work featured on this show. Noogie Meister Zach Shires would grow up to play a pants pissing bully named Tim in Freaky. Tennis casualty Dan Triandiflo played the rich douchebag Tom in Stranger Things 3. Sure did. The Podfather car. Put upon office worker Mark Farley played an Overlook ghost at the end of Doctor Sleep, while spaceship lightboard expert Matt Burke had bit parts in both Fear Street and Jurassic World. Nice! You get two different kinds of dinosaurs to, you know, Finally, Linda Miller is like a legit Tony-nominated actor whose dad was Jackie Gleason and whose son is Jason Patrick, star of The Lost Boys. Wow. She herself starred in the 76 slasher Alice Sweet Alice. Now everything in this intro has fallen apart. Different genres are colliding and the text and people are swapping sides. Wow, that does not sound pleasant. Nope. Not sound pleasant at all. Nope. We even get a bonus reference during the chaos to the short lived 1983 series Manimal. Amidst all this torment, it's a bleeding smart. The puppet was created and controlled by special effects artist Chris Brown, who also worked with Casper Kelly on Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. Meanwhile, he did the game. Damn, damn good job with that. version of Smart was created by Shane Morton, who made the freaking Cheddar Goblin and Mandy. Ooh. Oh. Across the room, Smarf Ooh. sees some kind of emergency stop red button. Valiantly, he crawls to it, expending his last bit of life energy reaching out to press it. He <laughs> dies on the floor, and it's debatable whether or not he succeeded. Clearly, he made contact, but the button didn't seem to depress. No. Whether he reached another plane of reality or is in some kind of afterlife, Smarf finds himself at the center of a biblical scale Brady Bunch grid of oh, characters. Yeah. We've reached the end, and to commemorate the occasion, we get one last family snapshot. Just don't leave old Bill Tukarski out of it. Yep, yep, there he is. Get mad again. Now that the show's intro is finished, we can finally enjoy Too Many Cooks. Honey, I'm home. Oh, oh no! To be continued. Itself. It takes a lot to count the kills, but do it right, and it's such a thrill. Let's get to the numbers. Too many kills. Too many kills. Oh! Oh no! James! James behind you! James! James! Oh god! Run, James, run! Run for your life, get some help! Run! Run! Oh no, is Zorin getting revenge? Is he getting revenge? Oh no. Katie? Oh, oh Katie! The chain spot. Oh, sorry. Oh! Awesome, they got her! Wait a minute, this is my house. Oh! Ah! And another one. 
Looks like they could have been Zora, not sure. Though. I counted 16 kills and too many cooks, with the victims consisting of eight women, seven men, and one Smarf. That gives us this pie chart, played expertly by Lars von Trier. And if you assume Smarf is male, we can say this count and gender breakdown has been seen twice before on this show, in Friday the 13th Part 7 and American True. Psycho. With a runtime of only 11 minutes, Too Many Cooks had a kill on average every 41.25 seconds. And bonus stat, by my own personal count, the phrase Too Many Cooks was said 130 times. <laughs> that gave us a Too Many Cooks on average every 5 fucking seconds. Oh no wonder God. it was so infectious. <laughs> yeah, the chainsaw true. Who was killed to Derek Huffmaster. His screaming when he comes back from a freeze frame is disturbing. Yeah, the machete for Lane's kill will go to Amy Holmberg, who was dragged away without any clear cause of death show. And that's it. Too Many Cooks came out in 2014, and I've watched it countless times since then. I literally never get sick of it, and it's one of my favorite things to share with the uninitiated. I hope you all enjoyed this look at it, because I truly believe I it is a masterpiece. Until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Hey, everybody. Yeah, this was absolutely brilliant from start to finish. Like, because I, I was watching it. I, I didn't know what I was getting into. I knew it had something to do with horror or something at all. So I just started watching it, and it's like, like, oh, I'm noticing, like, you know, different uh, references to old sitcoms that I used to watch way, way, way back when in the day. And just when you think it's just going to stop, it just keeps going, and then going, and then going, and then things get a little more stranger, a little more uh, bloody, I guess you could say, with, with all of these kills that were counted. And it, it got a little glitchy there, throwing in some really cool horror elements. And it just made it a whole lot more fun to watch. Not really sure how it was going to end, because then it would move on to the space stuff and do all these sorts of things. And then we ended it with a whole Brady Bunch style thing, showing everybody involved. Uh, it's so awesome that they got her to be involved in this. That looks definitely like Zorin. Thanks for watching Let's the play it a little bit. No. Wait, hold on. Let's play a little bit more. Oh, there he is. There he is. There's Zorin. There's, there's my guy right there. So, yeah, this was an absolute blast. I kind of want to go back and watch it again, though. After watching it the first time, the song has been stuck in my head. Even right now, I can just hear it just playing over and over and over again. So, maybe I should pass on it and hopefully <laughs> when you watched it it gets stuck in your head as well but that will do it for me here comment down below let me know what did you think about too many cooks please leave a like if you would drive please check all those links i have for you down in the description below and lastly and most importantly i want to give a huge shout out to all my five dollar and up supporters on patreon cruising wolverine 310 jordan bird kester Cronage, amber k raymond bright chris curtis Haley machinardi and perry larka fox Coffany, Dancing Viru, Morgan Page, Ania Silva, Christian Siebold, and Marcus Florence. And I'll see you guys next time.